Well, there is a new sheriff in King County. Mitzi Johanknik was sworn in this week as sheriff after pulling off what many considered a stunning upset over John Urquhart in November's election. And after spending decades in the King County Sheriff's Office, she has some bold ideas on how to move the department forward. Sheriff Mitzi Johanknik joining us live in studio this morning. Great to have you and Good congratulations to you on the victory. Um, it was a contentious campaign and one that was mired in scandal. John Urquhart accused of sexual assault and uh, he admitted that no doubt hampered his reelection campaign, accused your side of running a dirty smear campaign. So your take on the election and the campaign that you ran and your former boss's allegations. Yeah, well, thanks for asking about that. Um, so neither myself or my campaign had anything to do with that. Uh, it's never been our intention to run anything but a campaign that was based on facts and documents and other things that that we knew about and more importantly it was about what what i wanted to do when i became sheriff what we could do within the king county sheriff's office and and to make us stronger and better and connect with community you have been a deputy for a long long time what are the problems inside the department that need to be addressed and rectified well i think one of the the things that we're doing right now and has started since the election is the internal healing of the department, uh, bringing people together, not being afraid of, of doing the wrong thing. And has it been fractious in the past? Uh, it has been over the last couple of years, people feeling like if they do the wrong thing that they could get terminated from the department. Uh, so it's, it's about bringing back the teamwork part of public safety reaching out with our community, reconnecting, and getting back to the business of our work. Okay, so reconnecting with the community, that kind of leads me to my next point. A lot of people are concerned about um, violence and violent crime, particularly in, in the south end of Seattle, Federal Way, for example. Uh, Drive-by shootings have become a huge problem. As I mentioned, violent crime, home break-ins. Um, you know, we've, we've seen uh, a number of assaults in these particular areas. Um, is there anything that, that you can do as a department to help alleviate some of the concerns that folks in these communities have? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, uh, we had a drive-by shooting in Burien just yesterday at a school. Yeah. So uh, what we did last this past year, in the first quarter, there were something like 70 shootings across the South End. And so myself and other commanders in the sheriff's office, along with other chiefs of police and other agencies got together and did emphasis patrols over the course of the summer. And so we reduced those shootings down to seven in the South End. And so it's, it's getting back to having that coordination between other agencies and making sure that we're, we're working together to identify who the players are in these crimes to work to take them off the street and get them into the justice system. And, and, and making connections in the community has to be key in that, right? It is absolutely. And through my campaign, and I've, I'll be starting a new section in King County Sheriff's Office that's about community outreach alone. Um, and we'll be setting up citizen advisory councils and working with executive Constantine's staff and community services to just really connect and so people feel comfortable with us, build that trust, and they talk to us and tell us stuff. Yeah, that, that's a big deal. Uh, let's talk about homelessness. Obviously a huge problem in King County. We've thrown yes. a lot of money at it, and it doesn't seem to be getting better. In fact, in many cases, it seems to be getting worse. Uh, what's your take on what the Sheriff's Department can do to tackle uh, homelessness and the opioid epidemic? Because in some regards, they go hand in hand. Yeah, uh, they do in some ways. and And so, you know, the general piece is that being homeless in and of itself isn't a crime, but those people can become victims of crimes. They can, for survival, they can commit crimes themselves. So um, it's working with governmental agencies. You know, part of that is what I'll learn here initially, digging in and working with Seattle and, and King County and public health and finding ways to uh, better serve the community, get people out of homelessness. From a police side, we can do better enforcement of uh, working on our side to get opioids off the street, um, work to um, get the upper levels of those people supplying them and, and then help get people into treatment. There are two very different schools of thought on that. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. you have you know, people that would push for safe injection sites and people who say, uh, we need more money, we need more resources for these folks. And there are others that say, um, the city's not a campground, it's time to get the heck out if you won't accept the help. Where do you stand on it? So um, I've been and still am against safe injection sites. I think that there's, there's issues around them 
about uh, victimizing and re-victimizing people that might come to use them, especially when it has uh, relates to human trafficking. So women who have escaped human trafficking have talked to me and said, hey, we got out of the life, we got out of drug use, but this we really fear as a place where um, folks that are running uh, people and human trafficking uh, can re-victimize folks. I, um, I know we're running out of time. I wanted to ask one yeah. last question. You grew up around here. One thing that, that we learned about you live on the air, there was a, a big <laughs> reveal uh, from the Space Needle. They, they had a, a time capsule that they had discovered. And inside were a number of documents that included your dad. Your dad was instrumental in, uh, in part of the Space Needle's history, and so yes. were you. Can you yes. explain that a little bit? So my dad was a property manager there for many, many years. And as a matter of fact, the gentleman who was uh, narrating, Rod Kaufman, was hired by my dad. Um, and I worked there during summers uh, when I was going to college. So, How cool is that? Yeah, it was very cool. That's cool. What, what's, what was your favorite moment working at the Space Needle? Uh, those private moments when nobody else was in the building and there were m massive lightning storms. It was amazing oh, to yeah. watch. Oh, yeah. What a great perspective. And then also seeing Mount St. Helens blow. Oh my gosh, you saw that from the yeah, top of the from Space the Needle? the top of the Space Needle, yeah. That would have been okay. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Sheriff Mitzi Johagnik, congratulations to you. Thank Thanks you for so joining much. us this morning. Appreciate we appreciate it. it. Good luck to you. Thank you.